Hello there, this is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube. Welcome to this video. This is the first video of a series of videos that will give you a detailed tutorial on how to use Xero accounting software. So this is Xero in front of me. You may have Xero accounting software. You may just be interested in knowing how to use the software. This video and the following videos will teach you how to use the software. So a bit about me if this is the first time you've watched my videos. I am the bookkeeping master. I have around about 200 accounting and bookkeeping videos now on YouTube. But if you go to my website, www.freebookkeepingaccounting.com, you'll be able to see all the videos that I have. They're all for free. You'll be able to watch them. I also offer an exclusive bookkeeping course and the videos are very varied. If you are interested in accounting software tutorials, I have probably 40 videos or so on Sage Instant and Sage 50 accounts. I also have a basic course on QuickBooks online as well as other accounting software videos. So in this video and the following videos, I'll teach you how to use Xero accounting software. We'll look at things like adding customers, raising invoices for customers, raising statements, adding suppliers, recording supplier invoices, adding bank accounts and lots of other things, perhaps reports. We'll see how the videos go, but I want to make sure that you are aware of the many aspects of Xero so that you can use it for your business, company, charity or whatever entity that you own. So this is Xero. In this first video, I'm going to show you how to add your business or company details. And it's important that you do this because Xero will use the information you put into the software for invoices. So if you put in your company address and contact details, then they will appear on your sales invoices as well as other places in Xero such as reports. So let's start off by going to settings. You'll see we have a number of tabs at the top here. This is the dashboard. This is the home page, and there's some quick keys here to raise a new sales invoice, a new bill, which is a supplier invoice at a bank account. But we might come back to the dashboard later on in this course. So let's go to settings and general settings. And once we're here, you'll see there's lots of different options in front of us. But the only two options that we need to be concerned about at this time is organization settings and financial settings. So let's go to organization settings. And you'll have this page appear. So we have the basic information about the business or company and then the contact details. So let's start off at the top. We have the display name and legal and trading name. My business is called BPFS. That's the trading name for the bookkeeping master. So that has been entered there, BPFS. You can upload a company logo if you have one. It's worth doing so because it'll make your invoices look a bit more professional. So the logo you upload here will appear on statements and invoices and things like that. So all you do is click upload, find the file and upload the logo. What is the line of your business? I put accounting or bookkeeping. You need to put your line of business in there. Organization type. You may be a limited company. You may be a sole trader, a partnership, perhaps a charity, not for profit, but enter your organization type. Registration number, if you're a limited company, and then a description about the organization. So that's all pretty straightforward. Just enter that information. Next, we have contact details. And this is the information that Xero is going to use to allocate details on invoices. So the information I'll put here will appear on sales invoices. So postal address will make something up. Let's say 485. BPFS Road, that's in Bookkeeping 
master town state or region let's just do Essex that's where I'm originally from postcode we'll make something up CO 119 PO country United Kingdom it may not be on United Kingdom by default so just click on the drop down list and find the country United Kingdom and then attention I'm going to leave that blank but if you want the postal address to include some sort of attention you might want to put director or your name in there then just put it there and then that will appear on the postal address now if your physical address is the same as your postal address all you need to do is tick this box same as postal address but if you have a different physical address to postal address then put the physical address in here you may have a PO box for your postal address so you can put that up here and then the actual address down here but mine is the same and um, for most of you the physical address and postal address is the same so let's just tick that box and you'll see that this disappears telephone number once again we'll just make something up let's do 01208 889 you know I'm just putting any figures in email address that would preferably be the accounts email address or the general inquiries email address for the business so info at bpfs online.com and then website www dot free bookkeeping accounting dot com and then we have this special button down the bottom here that says add contact field now I really like this about Xero because if you click this you can add other details about the company such as a mobile number a fax number LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. So you can actually promote your social media on your invoices by clicking on one of these fields and then entering the information. So it's great. You can enter your Facebook details and then that will appear on invoices and other things raised by the company. So once we're happy with that information, simply click save and it will stay on this screen once it's saved so you'll need to click cancel once you've saved that data you'll then be taken back to that general settings page it's just loading okay and let's look at the financial settings and this is the page for financial settings you need to enter your financial year end so you can do that there for a lot of you it may be the 31st of March so that's why that year end has been put in by default VAT if you're VAT registered or not you can put none if you're not VAT registered we have the accrual scheme though flat rate cash scheme the flat rate accrual scheme enter the VAT scheme that you're on the VAT period monthly quarterly or yearly for a lot of you again if you are VAT registered it will be quarterly and your VAT number can go in there and then we have tax defaults for sales invoices and purchase invoices so if you want your amounts to be tax exclusive you can edit that here or tax inclusive or no tax you may have a special business that only has VAT on purchases and not sales or vice versa so you can change that here and it can save you later on having to change this with every invoice that you raise with X0 if you set the default then it's already set for you when you record or raise an invoice so both of them are tax exclusive we have some BAX details there if you're signed up to pay through X0 and then your time zone I'm London so that's correct let's click save okay wonderful that has been saved you can return to dashboard or if you click cancel 
you'll go back to that general settings page like so. So let's go back to the dashboard. We've entered our company details and we're ready to move on. So that's it for this video. For each video, what I'll try and do, if I can remember, is put a link in the description below for the next lesson. Otherwise, to the right of the video, there should be a next title or something like that, and you can just click that. Alternatively, if you, alternatively, if you go to my website, freebookkeepingaccounting.com, you'll be able to just see the list of videos and click on the videos that you want to watch. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe. If you have questions about Xero, then email me directly, info at bpfs-online.com. I do generally charge um, for email support, but there's details about that on my website. Also, I'll speak to you in the next video. Thank you for watching.